Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. You can find me online at my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day, and on Instagram as Kristen Esser. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 30. Welcome! I'm so happy to be back here. I literally do have my cup of tea in hand, and today it is oolong uh, from the, I think it's called Prince of Peace oolong from Amazon. And um, oolong is said to burn 67 calories for every cup that you drink. Can that really be true? I don't know, but I like it, and you know, I'll take my chances with it. I literally went and looked up the last time I podcast uh, before I started. I know it's been a little bit, I think it's been three weeks. Um, I always feel like that. So I'm saying it's been three weeks since my last confession. It's been three weeks since my last podcast. But um, yeah, it was before any of the kids came home. (laughs) And what a different time that seems now, let me tell you. So um, my two college kids from UC San Diego have moved back in. And we are once again bursting at the seams in the Esser household in a wonderful way. But I have to say it was not, you know, it hasn't been without its hiccups. (laughs) I would say that due to um, my ongoing project, which is now complete, of deep cleaning and decluttering the garage, which it's like maybe the project I am most proud of in my entire life, we had empty shelves, people, like three long empty shelves in the garage on one wall and like two on the other wall. I mean, it's like Gretchen Rubin talks about having an empty shelf in your house for your own hopes and dreams, for your own peace of mind. And, uh, and I get what she's talking about. It was funny because, um, one of my kids said, well, like, what are you going to put on them? And I'm like, nothing. They're going to be empty until the time we need them. Which came all too quickly because, um, I shouldn't say that, as each kid came home, my two college kids came home um, like about a week apart from each other, and I think I did a pretty good job of getting them integrated back, their stuff getting integrated back into the house. So the first thing I had them do is I gave them these Sterilite totes and said, anything that you need for school but you don't need at home, put in here. And so I told them, I don't want your college sheets towels, coffee cups, you know, anything like that, um, desk stuff that all just should be put away. And when you move, it's all packed up for you. So that eliminated a lot of it. Um, getting all the bedding washed and bagged up was a whole different thing, but because, you know, we kind of approached it that way. Um, we very quickly filled up these shelves with bedding and, and just school stuff. So Jonah's stuff is all in one section. Chloe's stuff is all in the other. And, uh, so that was, that was nice just to get everybody kind of integrated back in and actually over winter or spring break, I can't remember. Um, they had all done kind of decluttering in the room. So there's a little extra space, you know, to even, uh, cause my boys share a room, which is like, you know, two, basically six foot four (laughs) sized people. They share a room with bunk beds, like they're six years old, but that is the space that we have. I always said that this house was big enough. And if we were going to, if the house didn't seem big enough, we needed to get rid of stuff. And so, um, and that's kind of the, the approach we've taken. So we were able to integrate Jonah's stuff back into the bookshelf. So anyways, it's all good. Um, I think last week I, or last podcast, I kind of talked about, you know, how I was a little worried about, cause I know what it's like that literally the dishwasher is always full. It's always running. There is a pile up of dishes waiting to go into the next round. Um, yeah, somebody is always eating because these college kids do not really, um, eat they don't wake and live and eat on the same schedule as I do I'm if you if you haven't figured this out about me I'm very routine oriented and um so there's just kind of stuff everywhere so it's taken a, a bit of an adjustment and I did um sit down with all of them one day and had like a little talk about expectations if you watch the Brene Brown um YouTube special not YouTube special the Netflix special I think it's called Call to Courage she talks about um, she always has a, um, 
a conversation with her husband about vacation. I don't know why vacation. Maybe because vacation people have a lot of expectations because life is all about manager, managing your expectations, in my opinion. So she has what she calls the, the come to Jesus talk, the CTJ with her husband every time they go on vacation to like just lay, let's just lay it on the table. And so that's what it was. I had my CTJ with my, oh my gosh, with my CBJ, which is Chloe Jonah Benjamin, <laughs> Chloe Benjamin Jonah. Um, I never thought about that. But anyways, I had him sat down said, look, here's the deal. I work all morning and often into the early afternoon when I'm done, I do, you know, I've, I'm finding myself doing all the dishes, straightening up the house, you know, doing the chores and I'm feeling, I don't want to feel resentful. So everybody has to just do their part. It shouldn't take anybody more than a few minutes a day. And, um, so that was good. We kind of, you know, I'll be honest, we were having mixed, mixed results with it, but, um, and, and a lot of it's my, I'm, I am a person who ad- avoids confrontations. So there, I really, I just will do the dishes resentfully rather than ask someone else to do them. And that's my thing to overcome. And I've already today, I was practicing. I'm like, Hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do that? But I don't, I don't want to be the nag. So ah, being a mom, it's so hard, but it's good. We had a great father's day. We went for a hike. Um, Yeah, the kids, I think, are enjoying eating, like, you know, home cooking and just the the kind of foods that you miss when you're at school. So, yeah, it's all been good. And we're going to leave on vacation pretty soon in a couple of weeks. And so we're all super excited about that. Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabric supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, and notions. And did you know that they now carry cross-stitch supplies? This month, you can get Lella Boutique Patterns and her book Charm School for 20% off. Fat Quarter Shop carries all major brands like Moda, Riley Blake, Wyndham, Robert Kaufman, and Art Gallery with the largest selection of Fat Quarter bundles ever. Whatever fabric, pattern or notion you're looking for, chances are they'll have it. Visit them at fatcodershop.com. I'll put a link in the show notes. Well, let's start talking about quilting. I've got a few things to talk about. I am pleased to report. Um, the first one I want to talk about, I need to do a Instagram post. I haven't done this yet. Uh, maybe today when I post this podcast, I will think to do it. But I created a, an Orifil project. I'm an Orifil artist in this year. Super excited about that. And um, they challenged us to um, go into our welcome kit. They send everybody like a little se- a selection of all the different weights of threads um, that they have in a variety of colors so that you have a chance to kind of play around with things. And, you know, if you're anything like me, you're just like a 50 weight girl through and through. And, and that is my, my total, you know, go to weight, but I played with some 12 weight. Now 12 weight is quite heavy. So the, the lower the numbers, the thicker, um, the thread. So as a matter of fact, when Minky and I did Sew Illustrated, um, we used 40 weight a lot for sewing illustration because that just, um, creates a, a bolder outline for the illustration and sometimes even 28 weight, which, you know, is, is quite bold. Now, Usually when I am sewing, I want the thread to show not at all, (laughs) especially when I'm quilting. So I usually quilt using 50 weight. I should actually try 80 weight, which is very thin. Um, And I use that for hand piecing. I love, love, love it for hand piecing because it really helps you keep your seams accurate because there's so little bulk of the thread to get in your seam allowance. But back to the 12 weight. 12 weight's very heavy. A lot of people use it as a sashiko thread. Am I saying that right? I think it might be sashiko um, thread. If you know that uh, Japanese um, style of stitching or, you know, like the the visible mending, um, boro style visible mending, that kind of stuff, anything that, you know, it's quite thick, you want it to show. And um, so I'm not really used to that. But so I, I decided to create a pillow project. Now I did something very similar a few months ago. I think I used 28 weight then where I, um, I had some Robert Kaufman, Kaufman Essex yarn dyed linen. So that means it's a color, the threads are color one way and I think it's white the other way. So it's, it has a very cool kind of heathered look to it. And, um, a few months ago I, I picked a brown and then I, uh, kind of a medium brown to make the pillow front. And then I think it was 28 weight, a very dark brown thread. And I just did match stick quilting. I'm going to say maybe three or four inches wide one way. And I don't know, a few, 
inches the other way so that they crisscross in the corner. So, And I like that. It's been on my bed ever since. It's way more me than the frou-frou throw pillows that were on there. And I've meant to uh, create a, a second one for a while, and this was the exact time to do that. So I dug through that I had um, got about five or six shades of gray and blue and brown, tan, those kinds of things of this Essex yarn dyed. And so um, I got one, I thought it was blue, but I think it's actually a very dark gray. And in my welcome kit were two spools of 12 weight thread. One was a um, kind of a goldy dark yellow, you know, kind of like the, the top stitching from jeans, you know, that kind of a color. And the other one was gray, like the 2600 dev gray that everybody loves. And so I used those two and I did the same kind of thing where I just put, I, I cut it um, about 18 inches square and put a piece of um, batting underneath it and just marked one line to get me going. And I just sewed on that line with my walking foot and then just did the width of my walking foot, you know, for, I don't even know, it's not even in front of me, some number of inches. <laughs> and then I stopped and um, went back and went between them so that they're about, I think that the, they're probably an eighth of an inch apart. I think my walking foot gives you about either a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch. And um, so I did a couple that way in the yellow and then one in the gray and then I crisscrossed it the other direction. So if those were vertical, then I did some horizontal ones. So they, so it's a little bit like a very subtle plaid. Um, and as I mentioned before, when I did my last project, um, if you've never looked at the work of uh, Cassandra Beaver, you should check her out. There, the link is in the show notes uh, about this project. I posted about it a couple days ago. And um, she does these amazing whole, whole cloth quilts with different colors of orophil thread, um, creating these plaids. And they're amazing. So this is just a total baby version of it. But <laughs> I said before, I'm embracing. I like simple projects and I like neutrals and I like subtle projects and so that's exactly what this was it came out really cute and I um I had this blue and um well white with blue striped like ticking in my stash I have blue and red that I bought years ago I think I saw Minky use it for something I'm like that is so cute and I may have just gotten it from Joanne's I bought I don't know like a yard of each of them <laughs> they've been sitting in my stash for like five years but this was the perfect backing to this this project so I was very happy to to use those things up so super excited about that it was basically I did the stitching one night made, turned it into a pillow another night you know so it's like this the perfect kind of project for me these days um the other project that I'm working on are you doing the kinship quilt along so this is gnome angel she does these you know epic quilt alongs and so she's doing this one called kinship and it's one of those 100 blocks in 100 days kind of deal which between you and me i don't know my i feel like my instagram feed just fills up with the same block every day <laughs> so i have mixed feelings about it but that just shows you how huge they are that like i feel like 50 percent of the people in my instagram feed are all doing the same block but she's doing another one it starts july 1st and it goes through october i think and um so I'm participating. I'm not doing a block every day, but I'm um, kind of quilting along with a group of people from the um, with the Fat Quarter Shop, where I'm just gonna do one every couple weeks or a couple, you know, maybe one a week, something like that. And I've already um, started them. So when you if you buy the pattern, you can either buy a foundation a foundation paper piecing pattern, or you can buy it as a rotary cutting pattern. And <laughs> I don't know. There was a little bit of peer pressure. Everybody that I knew that was doing it got the foundation paper piecing. And uh, so I'm like, because they kept saying, oh, you know, they look small and things look a little fiddly. I think it'll be easier. I was like, okay, I don't know if I remember how to paper piece, but that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to like reteach myself how to paper piece using this project. And so that's what I did. Um, I will put a link in the show notes. It's a very... Um, it's a very modern looking sampler and what's really cool about it is it alternates square blocks with rectangular blocks and there's like no sashing I don't think and so it just creates a maybe there's sashing I don't think I don't know I can't remember now um, but I don't think there is so it's just I think it's kind of unique and some of the blocks are super simple so I printed out a, a you know a couple to, to start with 
completely failed the first time, watched a video, still failed. <laughs> but now I think I figured it out. I should find the video that helped me. I'm trying to think. I think it's the Crafty Gemini that helped me. She even has a little, you can download the, the uh, and print out what she is sewing. So you can kind of really follow along with her. But you know, my brain just, it doesn't work that well in this kind of situation, but I have it down now. I completely understand where to place the pad, the, the fabric. I'm really wishing I had a light box because I'm constantly holding it up to the light and um, you know, you have to do that so you can kind of make sure that it's in the right place and, it, and I can't see it that well, but it's working. So um, what's interesting is because it is 100 blocks in 100 days, most of these blocks are very, very simple and do not take that long. So the other day I was, it was Sunday, um, I was just kind of, uh, you know, sometimes I get to the point, I'm just not really sure what to do with myself. And I was going to take my son to drum lessons and I had about 30 minutes to kill and I'd already been reading and I was just like, I don't know what to do. So I thought, you know what, I'll just, you know, start this block. And from like, I already had it printed out, but I, you know, didn't know what, what the fabric was going to be. Um, I'm using actually Lori Holt, um, a lot of the same fabric, fabrics, which was the B Basics line that I did for my handpiece quilt along because they're kind of rainbowy and I just really love them so much and I still have a ton left over. And I have another line of Hor Lori Holt fabric, uh, probably like Cherry 2 or something, so, so Cherry 2, something like that. And uh, I've never quite known what to do with it. So I'm doing a kind of a primary color thing, just um, navy and aqua. Well, okay, I'm, I'm going to not say primary anymore because I already am going to aqua. Navy, aqua, red, orange, and yellow, I think is, is my color scheme there. Maybe I'll throw some green in. I'm not sure. But anyway, so I just cut the fabric. It was just kind of a, a block that had some strips in it. And the whole thing was done in like 10 minutes. I was like, oh my gosh. And it just, again, kind of showed me, reminded me of how you can do things in just such short periods of time if you just really use your time well. So I did that block and then prepped the next one and that one's still sitting there ready to go. So um, so I'm excited about that. Um, I, I've told myself I wouldn't take on, you know, any more of these quilt along things, but I just could not resist. Um, so let me know if you were doing it too. Um, I think it'll be really fun. And, you know, I don't know, I feel like you just you can really feel a part of it when people are all sewing the same blocks on the same days as you are. I think it's really fun. Um, what else am I working on? Um, I'm working, uh, I've mentioned the Moda Bake Shop quilt along a bunch of times now, but that's really in full gear now. Still not too late to start, however. So it's a, called Summer at the Seashore. There's a couple super cute setting options for this quilt. I'm actually not doing the quilt. I just contributed a couple of blocks, which I still need to write my posts for. But um, Susan from the Felted Pear did this super cute um, setting for it and I cannot remember what it's called, but it's one of those kind of funky offset ones with some cool filler blocks. And she's using the same fabric that I am for my blocks, which is the um, ombre confetti. I feel like I'm not saying that right. Uh, ombre confetti metallic. So it's ombre from, from um, what her name? what's her name? V. Christensen. Um, Vanessa Christensen, and they have some gold little um, confetti circles all over them that sparkles. It's really cute. So th her fabric looks really cute, and her background is um, like a dark gray chambray fabric, so it's super cute. So check out that. Um, you can go on Facebook, and if you're interested, you can join a Facebook group called the Moda Bake Shop Bakers, where everyone is just sharing their blocks every day. Very, very cute. So if you're looking for something to do this summer, that's another fun one. And I actually recommend it to the people in my hand-pieced quilt along boot, uh, group that if you, um, you know, a lot of times they're, you're looking for new projects and since a new block comes out every few days or, and you don't have to do all of them, um, it's kind of the perfect hand piecing kind of project just to do a block at a time and worry about, you know, kind of putting it together into the quilt at the end. And uh, yeah, I think that's just about it for quilting. Oh no, it's not. I still have a few more things to talk about. One day when I was doing my, what I call my zone work, you know, for Fly Lady, the zone was my sewing room. And I just spent like 10 minutes, basically, I had all these piles of fabric from previous projects. I still had all my poppy cotton, so um, 
fabric together and all my Loyal Heights fabric together. And I just was not ready to break apart those lines and sort of file them in with the rest of the fabric because I felt like I just, there's still things that I'd like to do with them. So on the poppy cotton, um, I did this um, table runner with a different size flying geese. Well, I didn't know what my plan was when I started that project. So I have a gazillion flying geese still left over. So I just took a Ziploc bag, I put the extra fabric and those flying geese in there and zipped it up and actually sketched out an idea that I have of what to do with that. And I put that piece of paper in there. And I did the same thing with Loyal Heights. I made a bunch of extra nine patches because again, I wasn't counting, I was just sewing. And I put the, the scraps for that pro uh, project in a bag with a little sketch of, the t of a table runner that I want to make. And kind of just filed those on my shelf as projects that I can go back to someday as sort of an easy win. So someday when I'm wandering around on a sun Sunday evening thinking, I don't want to sew on what I'm sewing or what well, I'm not sure what to do. I could like just pick one of those up and maybe even finish it in a night. And so I was pretty proud of myself for that idea. And while I was kind of going through some of this, this fabric and trying to figure out what to do with things, um, I realized that I have some bundles of fabric that, you know, as we do, I don't love anymore. And I'm going on vacation up to a lake house with some extended family. And I have these nieces up there who I taught to hand sew two years ago and they loved it. And I'll never forget little Janie at one point said, sewing with the machine would just feel like cheating at this point. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. So I bundled up those fabric so it's, it's kind of like a fat quarter bundle and I have a ton of scraps and at this point in my life they're really cute scraps it's funny when I made my first scrap quilt I felt like I only had kind of ugly scraps but now I have really cute scraps so I'm gonna take that fat quarter bundle and some of the scraps up to the lake and say here girls have at it here are some you know cute things and who knows I was just like shocked at all the stuff that they came up with to do with it last time so yeah so that was kind of a, a fun little win and oh, the other thing, I'm put my tea down here. I want to talk to you about is I got a new book. Super excited about it. It is called Sunday Best Quilts, 12 Must Make Quilts You'll Love Forever. And it is by two of my favorite Moda fabric designers and pattern designers for that matter, Sherry McConnell and Corey Yoder. So they teamed up and came up with um, 12, 12 quilts. And it is a great book. I have had such a good time to, of, of just like sitting outside reading it. You know, I love it when um, like pattern books like this and cookbooks have a lot to just read. You know, it's not just patterns, but you kind of really can get into their heads. So there's a section here called Cultivating a Friendship. And they just, they share how they got involved in quilting and, and um, their favorite fabric lines and if you were a quilt block what would you be all kinds of stuff and they've um, created a number of patterns here they took like an idea and then they each created a quilt to fit the idea so let me just tell you um, they have a section called favorite star quilts so they each did a star quilt um, they each did a scrappy quilt they each did a red and white quilt a Christmas quilt pineapple quilts court steps quilts. So I guess so there's 12 quilts, three styles, and they each did one. So um, I've been looking through this and I actually think that I'm going to take a quilt that I was planning on making with a uh, Minky Someday fabric. And I've just decided that I'm not in love with the pattern that I made for that. And I think I'm going to make one of these. I have not figured out which one it's going to be. Um, so, but anyways, uh, the the patterns are spot on they are absolutely beautiful and they are made um just you know with a lot of their fabric lines and and not just theirs but other ones as well a red and white quilt oh i would i need to make a red and white quilt it's totally a bucket list a lot of these they said are like kind of like bucket list quilts um for people there's one here by Cory yoder called sweet confetti that's that's very cute i also like her starling one and um the one by sherry mcconnell called on a whim it's a kind of a star within a star quilt. Very cute. So it's from Martingale. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes, but yeah, it's, it's just, it just came out. And so, um, yeah, I highly recommend it. And I'm very much looking forward to, I think that'll be kind of my later summer project to, to do a quilt out of, out of that book. 
Uh, of course, I, as usual, don't have as much knitting to talk about, but I do commit to taking my sock. I've got a pair of socks. One is done. One is halfway done. and I'm going to take it on vacation and finish that pair of socks. And then I will rethink my, um, what my next project is for knitting. You know, I think that that will probably get set aside a little bit till the fall. Um, because I have another, the other handwork project that I want to bring on vacation. I guess I'm not finished with my quilting segment here is, um, the, hand quilting of my first hand pieced quilt along quilt it you know I've just started quilting that and I felt really clumsy about it to be honest with you and was not loving it not and not loving my results and so I just kind of set it down and I know from experience that I just need to push through even if I don't love the quilting that is in the in the bottom right corner where I'm starting I know I'll be so much better by the end and you know I'm using an off-white blending thread and so only I will ever realize that those stitches were you know not great so I'm, I'm gonna push that because that's good um, you know I can do that on the plane I can do that at the uh, outside at the lake so knitting hand quilting and um, I think I'm actually going to start an embroidery project with some aura floss another kind of challenge to use um, some of the aura products that I don't use a lot so they also in addition to the 12 weight thread which people use for embroidery all the time they also have aura floss which is a six strand embro- embroidery floss just like your very your typical embroidery floss so um, I've got a couple um, motifs that I would like to transfer onto some vintage dish towels that I have that are just those flower sack dish towels. I actually have a whole drawer of these that I've done um, in the past with just little embroidery things on them. But Minky has a a book called Diary and Stitches that came out, um, I don't know, a while back, maybe a year ago. And I am going to take a couple motifs from that book and put them on a dish towel and uh, do a little black work or blue work uh, embroidery. You know, I again I'm a simple girl I don't do a lot of colors but um, I love I love just like black work just all outlined in black I have a whole set that I did from a, a posy gets cozy from Alicia Paulson she had these ones that were like a look set pan and um, like a an embroidered uh, what's it called like a frosting bag and you know, a little kitchen motif super cute so so those are the same things that I am packing up for vacation Let's move on to books. My goodness, I've already been talking for 27 minutes. My, how time flies. Um, I did finish a book that I started talking about last time called The Secret History. It was a daughter that my, it was a daughter. It was a book that my daughter recommended to me as one of her favorite books. And um, it got good. Like it was one of those books where I was reading it and it was like, yeah, this is fine. It's about these, a lot of rich kids at this East coast school and this kind of weird classics department. But you knew it started with a murder. Like that's the very first thing you find out. So I'm not spoiling anything there. And it was just trudging along. I was maybe a quarter of the way through and I kind of set it down for a couple of weeks and then I picked it up and I finished it in two days. It's like, I so got going on it. (laughs) So um, it's by the woman who wrote The Goldfinch. I talked about it on the last podcast. I want to say her name is Donna Tart. Um, I think she wrote it in the 90s. Um, So it's not a new book, but it was very good. Um, It was very sort of hard to take in places, I have to admit. Um, There are lots of twists and turns. And um, so... Yeah, it was very good. It was very good. I feel like I am the worst book reviewer because I'm just like, yeah, I really like that, but I don't really explain why. But um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about that except for just a lot of crazy stuff happens in that book that just makes you glad that you didn't go to school with these people. That's all I have to say about that. Um, For vacation reads, I am hoping to take... The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton, which I started at Christmas time. It was a Christmas gift, I believe, um, and it could not get any traction on it. And I've heard from others that same kind of thing, that it was a little slow going at the beginning, but at about the 75% mark, <laughs> three quarters of the way through, it gets going. And so I am going to, and I like to have a non-digital book to read at the lake, um, I don't know. It just feels more unplugged. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to take that. And I've been listening to some audiobooks while I've been sewing lately. I think I last time I told you, um, and this is just through Libby through the library. Um, 
I've been listening to Louise Penny books, which is the Inspector Gamache series, which I love with all my heart. But it's really nice to listen to a book you've already read when you're doing something that you can be a little distracted. Um, so like when I'm sewing. So I had one book, um, The Beautiful Mystery, and then, you know, I suppose you could renew it, but it just disappeared after two weeks. And I was like, oh, no. So I just searched for another one. And now I'm reading um, How the Light Gets In, which is um, a, a, a real a real kind of turning point book in the series, which is what I said about The Beautiful Mystery, but they both kind of are. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's also, if I'm having trouble sleeping, um, you know, there's a timer on the Libby app and um, just so having it play a book that I already know. So I don't have to really worry about missing anything. That's been, that's been really good. So that's about it. I've been plugging away on uh, the Michelle Obama becoming, which I've been talking about for months. So I've been a kind of a slow reader lately, but um, so that's, that's kind of it for books. In terms of shows, um, Chloe and I watched, I'm sure you have seen this on Netflix, at least advertised. It's called Murder Mystery. And it has um, Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler. And it's very cute. If you like light murder mystery novels, then I think you would like this because it, it's kind of, um, it's, it's very lighthearted, even though many people die. <laughs> but it's funny. Um, it's about a couple that goes on like they're very, uh, kind of like a second honeymoon and somebody dies, they kind of get embroiled in that in uh, sort of not on purpose and as they try to they get falsely accused of the murder and so then they're as they're trying to exonerate themselves um, you know they have to like kind of get in it and sort of help solve it and it takes place in Europe so the scenery is really nice and um, it's it's very funny and entertaining we had a good time with that uh, I've continued with Outlander which I oh my gosh I just finished the first season and the last episode of the first season was so hard to watch. Oh my gosh. You know those situations um, where you read a book and I feel like when things are gory or violent, you sort of imagine them at a level that you can handle. And so it's very much different than watching it on film. I remember that with when, when we read the Harry Potter books to the kids and then when we went and saw the movies, the movies were so much scarier. And um, so there's a, a very horrible thing that happens um, at, the, at the end of Outlander in season one. And I remember it happening in the book, but yeah, it, I just, it, the way what they filmed so surpassed what I had imagined, you know, I did a lot of fast forwarding through that episode. And I thought only season one was on Netflix. So I'm like, okay, this is almost over. Like you're, you're free. You've watched what you could watch about Lander. Turns out there's a season two. So I might, I don't know if I'll watch it or not, but um, it got pretty gory. I mean, it's, it's a hard show to watch. I love the story. I love the characters. But, um, you know, it's a cable show. Let's just say that, you know, with the sex and violence. And so sometimes that gets a little hard to, to take for me. Um, and that's about it. You know, I'm just, we're coming down to the end. We're cur almost current with Madam Secretary. And I'm going to be so sad when we are caught up on that show. And um, yeah, so that's about it uh, for the shows. So let's finish up with some homemaking. Um, a long time ago, I came up with this idea that I never followed through on <laughs> and it was called family service hour and I came up with this idea when at some point I don't know how many years ago you know four or five years ago um, I, I wanted to wash all the windows in the house and I you know this is not something I look forward to and I realized that I had a bunch of teenage kids and so I put them all to work all five of us me and Chloe inside my husband and the boys outside washed all the windows in the house in about an hour and a half. And I just thought this is a miraculous thing because it's usually something that I would do over like a couple of months or something. And I realized, you know what? I should take advantage of the fact that I have got these kids here and just for an hour a week, we call it family service hour. And we all get together and we work on something that benefits the whole family, you know, weed the garden, you know, or dig up the garden, you know, at the beginning of the season, um, you know, could have been at that time, clean the garage or do some sort of, you know, deep cleaning thing. And I thought this was going to be a great idea. It would teach them how to 
um, clean and maintain a home. You know that owning home a home is just it's it's not fun sometimes. There are things that you have to do that kind of suck, but if you do them all together, you know many hands makes make many hands make light work. I cannot talk today. I apologize. Um, it never really came to fruition, but the idea of getting all the kids to wash the windows has stuck. <laughs> and so we finally, we did that, um, the other day, which was great. And I totally do encourage you just like get in there, get those kids helping, and especially if you're doing it with them, there's, you know, kind of not much they can complain about. I think the first few times we may have sort of rewarded them in some way, like, oh, we're going to go out to dinner. Oh, well, I'll make dessert or just some kind of fun little thing. Um, but what which was interesting about it, I've recently done um, a home audit where I've literally walked through every room of the house and started making lists of things that need to be maintained because I feel like we're getting behind. This house is over 30 years old and we've done a number of things, but oh my gosh, things just wear out. And I'm a little afraid if we just wait till things break, that everything's going to break at the same time. So I want to make a list. I want to prioritize it and start knocking it out. And what was interesting is is doing something, you know, when you deep clean, you, you get up close and personal with your house. And um, we found a number of things, like three screens that really need to be replaced. So I got out on a Monday morning, this mobile screen place is coming and they're going to come and replace those screens. Um, so that felt good to kind of, that's like an easy win. That's a, a low hanging fruit. Um, and that just, we realized, you know what, we really need to have the trim on this house painted. We really need to replace our patio cover, like, which we kind of knew in California, we have these, um, wooden, um, I, I don't know. I think they're called pergolas. So there's, they're slatted. They're not, they're not completely shaded. You know, there's like slats and they're all wood. Everybody in California has them just to get a little shade when you sit outside. And, um, we have, you know, kind of been fixing ours for years. And I'm telling you, the whole thing needs to be torn to the ground and, um, and rebuilt as a matter of fact. So you have to stand on it to wash the windows upstairs and, um, a piece of it just literally broke when, when my husband stood on it. So it's like not even safe. Like I need to get it replaced before we wash windows again, because, uh, it's not really even safe to stand up there. But, um, but it was just good to, to, um, realize, you know, we've got stuff we need to do and I'm going to, I'm going to make a list and we're going to start investing in that. So, and the other thing I wanted to talk about is I just, I wanted to get a little bit more into some kind of, uh, natural homemaking and trying to, um, do things that are a little bit more environmentally responsible. Um, so I thought maybe for a while, as long as I can think of ideas, I would do a little section here called One Simple Swap. And it's just a, a small change that you can make maybe from how you're doing things now to a way that's a little bit more environmentally responsible. And what I wanted to talk about this week were wool dryer balls. Um, are you guys using these? I don't know if you know this. I think um, by this time a lot of people do, but fabric softener and dryer sheets are very bad for the environment. The chemicals that are used to make them, and they're, they're not really good for you for those chemicals to be rubbing up against your skin. But... What do you do? What do you do? How do you keep your clothes soft and um, deal with static? The answer is wool dryer balls, which you can buy on Amazon. The first ones I bought were from Amazon, and I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, the last set I just bought at Trader Joe's. They have them now. So you get like a set of six, and I just keep them in my dryer all the time. And they're, they're just like tennis balls in a way. And, you know, Holly Ann over at String and Story, I think she did a video where she made her own. She felted her own wool dryer balls and then she made one into like a pin cushion <laughs> but I put them in the dryer and um so it's like putting a you know like a tennis ball in the dryer if you've ever done that so that your sheets don't tangle up or whatever it's, so you get like six of them in there and it kind of it just keeps them soft you can actually um put some essential oils on the wool balls and it will scent your um laundry without you know like a, a fabric softener or or dryer sheet but it will not transfer oil onto your onto your clothes which i actually had problems with with fabric softener so um yeah so it's oh it, it works out it works very well and if you miss fabric softener in the um in the wash cycle, you can actually put a quarter cup of white vinegar in the fabric softener a compartment of your washing machine, or even in those little, if you use the fabric softener balls, um, and then just do your timed release if it's in the, in the compartment. Um, and it will, um, kind of soften your clothes and it will also sort of, um, 
what's the word, sort of deodorize your clothes. So it's really good for when you're doing rags and, and towels and things like that. But I just put a quarter cup in every load of laundry that I do. And I use the wool dryer balls. And um, I actually don't like heavily scented um, clothes. Um, so I don't miss, I have, I, we've used unscented, uh, you know, uh, laundry detergent for years. Um, and so, and you know, I know some people want that smell because that's what smells clean to them. I don't really need that, but if you use the, the essential oils, it's kind of a very soft, um, very mild smell. So I really like that. So that's it, um, for the homemaking section. I wanted to thank a few people who left reviews. I really appreciate it. And everybody said such nice things and it's so fun for me to read. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to read the, the names and they all are a little bit uh, weird this week. So it's KMR412002. Thank you for your review and TMCCMC. And this last one, I think that her handle is 31 colon 22. Maybe it's a scripture. I don't know. 31 22. So thank you very much for your reviews. I appreciate it. And I do feel like I am just, um, you know, when I'm talking here, I feel like I'm chatting with a friend. It's a little bit of a, like I'm maybe oversharing <laughs> a little bit of a one-sided conversation. So I love it. You know, I've got a few DMs this, since my last podcast of just, you know, kind of people checking in and telling me things uh, about themselves. And I really appreciate that. I just, you know, kind of, you know, like, uh, feel like I'm finding my tribe here. And that's how uh, one of the listeners put it too. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, I hope that you've had a good time here and we will see you next time.